or this is not a Monte Carlo, it's a huge plate, it's so big. And in the center we have two mountains with holes, as you saw before. You see the holes are very strong, they didn't, I didn't clean them. And again, you can put water inside, you can put the flowers through, and they will grow. But in reality, if you think about it, we have three kind of yellow inside. So it is not so simple as it seems. But there are always the complexity. The complexity for me in design is very, very important. It's important that we know we are using things not casually, but we think where they bring the, the users to think, to do, to act, to behave. Uh, so all these that are one of small series pieces, for me, they are not our pieces, but kind of a laboratory to understand design, to understand the human being, whom I have to speak or collaborate or produce things. This was done in Bohemia, it's a huge vase. It's another technique. And also this, this is if you think it's so high, so it's a very big project. And then I did a restaurant in Japan, in Mito. It's a very important museum that now unfortunately and big damages during the earthquake of Arata and Zuzaki, in which I did everything from the space with all the objects, even the graphics of the menu. And I decided to do the glass in Japan with Japanese. And I made it the atmosphere of Japan. And I wanted to try to, to, to do something that doesn't have this very rigid form. So I take forms that you saw very often in work here. But what I've done, you know, when they do the, the wine cups, normally, they do them, and when you glue them, you have added part that you use it only to blow, for the blowing uh, period. And then you, have, you saw it, I don't know if you know it, if you saw it ever, they cut it. And normally they cut it by creating only a with a diamond they do a kind of a sign and then they heat it a little bit and it collapses. And then they heat it a little bit more until it becomes rounded. So I said, okay, if we use such a technique, maybe we can do another thing. We can heat all the other part a little bit more and leave it to begin to collapse. And then to take it very quickly and to see if we can block this moment. It means that every glass will be different one from the other. Although the structure will be the same. All the glass will be the same, only the upper part will be different. And I worked with them for some days of inventing and knowing how, when to take it out and the movement, because when you take it and it's still collapsing, you have to take it out and to move it, not like when you take honey from the jar. No, you have to be very big, if not it will go down. So you have to do the same thing because it is like a, in this phase it's a little bit like a hammer. So we, in, we discovered, we perfectionized the system and everything was okay. When I came to the opening of the restaurant, I was shocked. All the, the cups were this. All of them were free in very free form, but all of them the same. When I went out, they took two guys and they did so many experiments until they learned to do them in free form, but in the same precise way. It was shocking. So we had this very strange experience. And then uh, Dome, it's a very famous, maybe the most important uh, French firm of glass, crystal, asked me to buy the design and to produce it. And I was very happy because for me it was something strange that such an artistic product would come to me, would be getting to production by door. And uh, we did it again. We, I showed them already, I had experience, so I was very sure of it myself, and they did it. When I write the photographs, I don't know if I have it here, of the product, yes, I discovered that they are cut 
This is the organ photograph of the cat alone. The cat did perfectly. So I called them and I said, what did you do? We worked for one week experimenting everything. I said, yes, but people, the Western world, everyone thought that they are defective glass. So we had to stop the production and to cut the So the most important feature in my design was left aside as if nothing happened. So you see the designers all work and they are not so important. Now in Novibor we did very many experiments, laboratories. Uh, in one of them we had a very big fun with Paolo de Canelo, no? if you meet him. You will meet him. No, no, no. He is teaching. He is one of the group uh, of the Archizum group. He was uh, uh, part of the group of uh, uh, Andrea Franzi that you know that you were going to be. So we worked together and here we did a lot of experiments on glass. This is pieces that we did there. And this is a piece that we did in this laboratory in experiment, in which you can see the foam, the cutting, and so on. When I came back to Italy and I showed it to Aurelio Zanotta, we decided to do the collection for them. So this is the collection we did, to, uh, the first collection of Zanotta of glasses. That is in the Museum of Paris too. So obviously it's very interesting because a firm, when they do something, they have to have a collection. It does, it's not enough to have an object, but they have to have a collection. So we work on the collection. And you see how it was interpreted, if the other one was done, it's very interesting to see the difference. Uh, part of the color, but this is one of peace, uh, and it was done by in Bohemia with a very particular glass. These are done in Murano. So it's different quality of glass, not so nice and so on. But it was a very big success and I liked it very much, the collection. And then we worked a lot. Here you can see the pattern I spoke about destroying glass. You can see this uh, a close up to show you how you can see the, the aggressivity we use on the glass. And this is kind of a sculpture when I spoke about twisting the glass when it's cold. So this is an object, it was one object, a sculpture, it was an exhibition, and you saw that all the way it is today. So it was blown a kind of a form and then it was twisted and then I did a bronze element in which it goes inside to you. So what happens is that when today it seems that the structure is twisting the glass, but in reality it was twisted in its the air pressure in the body, no? But the same idea we did for the third collection of Zanotta. Um, it's an object that has a huge success in which we do several forms. Here you have the table element and the floor, because this is very high one. This is my height for the structure, and said this is a kind of a table. Element obviously in photo you don't see. Uh, so done in Murano, and you can see we blow it already twisted with two, or the other one with three legs. And uh, afterwards, when you put it inside this cage, it seems that this very soft metal uh, uh, created the, uh, this form, but in reality, it's something that we could design before. Here we play very much with the colors, because in Murano we can put straight uh, one color above the other and uh, so you can see this is very very nice effect. Um, the base is done with a very thin metal of uh, sand steel and below it's white, a red. Normally you don't see so much the red but you see the reflection on the first uh, surface it stands. This is needed especially for the photograph but normally you, it seems that it's floating on the red uh, a reflection, and you don't see very well the color. I wanted here, you can see how it works. I wanted to show you how an idea, completely free idea, and no, when you work, you don't think about the result that might come out from the, the object. And we decided to do it also in a number uh, edition with red uh, colored glass. Red glass is done with gold, so it's very, very expensive and liked it very much, but they didn't believe that we would be able to put it in production. 
So they decided to launch the collection by a limited edition in red color. Uh, they did it, and we never even discussed how many pieces we are going to do of this limited edition. Um, I don't remember how much they did, but they sold them everything before the fair. So what happened is in the fair we didn't have any more places because the big uh, uh, shops in the world bought immediately all the limited collection. So it was very big. It was pity because almost no one saw it because it went immediately to collectors. And it's very particular because it's a very nice red color, like in the photo. <clears throat> now it's strange because if you think about it, and be the glass of Ritzenhoff, you know, Ritzenhoff did the very simple glasses of milk glass, and then uh, they uh, uh, invited architect, designer, graphics to de decorate it. I wasn't be the first to participate in that. And then they asked me to do a limited edition, and the limited edition was of 10,000 pieces. So it's a little bit funny because 10,000 pieces that are limited edition for me is something insane. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, there is a kind of proportion. When I met uh, uh, one of the United States uh, golf champions came to my office once, with two suitcases full of those glasses that are, they don't have any one value, really, because it's a very simple glass. It's decorated by serography. Uh, he asked me to sign them all, and it was really, I had them for hours to sit and sign them, all these glasses. Uh, uh, collecting is a very, collectors are very strange people, and all, it's a very strange phenomenon. Um, so it's a little bit funny, hmm? 10,000. Uh, this is a, a very uh, uh, interesting experiment. You are going to see the demon of it. Maybe he will show you, you ask him to show you the Peirano box he did with Alessi. Allora, Peirano is uh, one of the finest Italian chocolates. Now, it had a big problem. Now, the owners bought it again, and I'm very, very uh, I'm happy. In such a moment, they in the uh, uh, mid of the 90s, or the, uh, already 2000, they asked some designers, everyone to do a box for those chocolates. In which they said, they asked, Sotsas to do it with wood, Mendini with spiny steel, uh, Dalisi with ceramic. Um, and I did it from glass. So I didn't want to do it from blown glass because uh, I never want to do what people uh, ask me to do. I try always to do something different because it's not obvious. So what I did, I took a very normal glass, flat glass that used for windows or other things. And I did four holes. The holes are not exactly in the corners, it's a little bit from the uh, but they designed a square. And then I took these wood pieces. The wood pieces are from rose tree. So the rose tree, you know, they use it very much in the teapots, the English traditional teapots, the hellos are natural. It's a very nice wood. Maybe again, the photos lose their fineness. So